Hi everybody. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to find the point of intersection between a line and a plane. So in our first example, we've been asked to find the coordinates where this line, given in a parametric form, intersects this plane, given in its Cartesian form, and the point of intersection we've labelled point P. So it's important to understand that any point along this line will have a general x coordinate of 2 plus 3 lambda, a general y coordinate of negative 1 minus 2 lambda, and a general z coordinate of 4 minus lambda. Now at point P, we can substitute this x value into the Cartesian equation, this y value into here, and this z value into here. And this will all equal the negative 34. So now what we can do is we can expand out these brackets and solve the equation for lambda. Then we can substitute this lambda back into the equation of a line. And that will give us the exact point of P. So we'll expand out these brackets. And then we'll collect the lambda terms separately to the constant terms. So we get 13 lambda plus 31 is negative 34. We'll move a 31 to the right hand side and then divide both sides by 13. So lambda will equal negative 5. So now we can work out this point P. If we substitute this lambda into here, we'll find our specific x value, y, and z value. So our x value will be 2 minus the 15, negative 1 plus the 10 and the 4 plus the 5. So we know our point of intersection then will have coordinates negative 13, 9 and 9. Okay, let's try another example. Okay, so in this example, we've been given the equation of a line in its parametric form and the equation of a plane in its scalar product form. And we've been asked to work out the coordinates of Q. So perhaps you want to try this question yourself. You can pause the video, and when you come back, we'll go through the work solution. Okay, so welcome back if you had a go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write the equation of a line using column vectors. I just find it easier to work with it in this form. So we know the general x value of any point on this line will be 2 plus mu. The general y value will be negative 3 plus 2 mu and the general z value will be 1 minus 3 mu. So now we've got the general point or anywhere along the line, we can substitute this value of r into the equation of a plane. So we'll substitute this into here. And this means we'll dot the general point along the line with the normal vector to the plane. So at this point, we can dot these two vectors together, then we'll create an equation involving mu. And we know this will be equal to 7. Then we'll expand out each of these brackets. And we'll collect the constants separately to our mu terms. Then we'll move a negative 7 to the right hand side and divide both by 14. So 14 mu will equal 84. Therefore mu will equal 6. And then we'll substitute this mu value into the equation of a line. And at point Q, so our x value will be 2 plus the 6, the negative 3 plus the 12, and the 1 minus the 18. And this will give us our coordinates 8, 9, and negative 17. Okay? Let's try one more question. Okay, so in this example, we've been asked to show that line L1 and line L2 do not meet. This means that they are skew lines because we can see that they're not parallel. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume that they do meet. We'll find the general x, y, and z coordinate for line L1 and the general set for L2. Then we'll make these equal to each other at the point where they could meet. So if I call this one L1 and L2, we know the general point on L1 
will be 1 plus lambda, negative 1 minus 2 lambda, and 2 plus 4 lambda. And the general point on L2 will be 6 minus mu, 1 minus 4 mu, and negative 2 plus 3 mu. Now if they do meet, we can make these two sets of general points equal to each other. So if they were to meet, the general point on L1 would at some point be equal to a general point on L2. So what we can do is we can find lambda and mu for our x and y points by setting up two simultaneous equations. Then we can solve that and test our lambda and mu on our third point. So for x, 1 plus lambda will equal 6 minus mu. And for our y value, negative 1 minus 2 lambda will equal 1 minus 4 mu. And then we can use these to set up a pair of simultaneous equations. So lambda plus mu will equal 5. And rearranging this to lambda minus 4 mu will equal negative 2. Then we can solve these on our calculators. We get lambda will equal 3 and mu will equal 2. So now we can substitute each of these into our z point. And we know that if both sides are equal, then the lines will meet. If the both sides are different, then the lines don't meet. And you can see that the 14 does not equal the 4. So therefore, the lines do not meet. Okay? Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that useful. If you did find that helpful, please like and subscribe. And you can download the full lesson from my website, mrmathematics.com.